I'm James O'Brien, and this is the importance of buttock strength. A goal in fitness training, as well as rehabilitation, should be to make strong, flexible, and powerful hips while maintaining a correctly aligned and stable spine. And that, in essence, is the recipe to treat low back dysfunction. So, in other words, we want to make sure that our spines are in appropriate alignment, and we can stabilize it there through good core stability, good core strength. Then we want to make strong and flexible hips so that we actually move through them. We have the flexibility to move through those hips, but we also have the strength to recruit them and to use them for um, a variety of activities. What are the major muscle groups that control the hips? The buttocks, or as they say in Germany, das Booty. In athletics, you've probably heard the expression, it's all in the hips, and there's so much truth to that. All right. And what are the main muscle groups that control the hips for forceful movements? It's the buttocks. All right, so let's give a few examples here. So we think of that baseball player. As he's winding up to throw that pitch, what he's doing is he's loading the buttock, and then he's firing through. As he fires through with that hip, that's how he's generating so much force to be able to throw that ball really hard. We can take that example in shoveling snow, if you're shoveling snow the right way. As you take it back like this, you're loading that buttock, and then you can thrust that snow really far. We think of the Olympic weightlifter who um, is really strong. They got massive butts. Really, they're taking that weight up by thrusting those hips. As they thrust those hips, that's how they can fling the weight up nice and high. So, yes, it's all in the hips. And what is the main muscle group that controls the hips for um, large movements? The butt or das booty. Now, as a physical therapist, I'm not really always teaching people how to throw a ball fast or fling a weight really high or far or whatever, or to sprint really fast. I encourage people to do a lot of buttock strengthening to simply learn how to get up out of a chair the right way, to bend forward the right way so they use their buttocks, to walk the right way to use their buttocks. So for so many of the activities that we do, we really need to be able to recruit the butt better. And unfortunately, because we sit on our butt all the time in crummy posture, our butt gets weak and we start to uh, overuse our hamstrings. We start to overuse the low back muscles as we stand in a sway back. So many reasons why we don't use the butt. So it's so important that we start strengthening the buttocks so that we actually start to use it more. A large problem with low back dysfunction is if we're not using our buttocks to do the job, then we're going to use our spine to do the job or our low back to do the job. For example, if I don't hip extend well correctly, then I will back extend. All right. If I don't have good buttock strength or good hip flexibility, I might bend forward and not recruit my buttocks. And when I stand up to uh, come up to that more erect position, I'll just extend through my back rather than doing it correctly and extending through the hips. So if we're not using our hips correctly, then we're likely using our back incorrectly, generating wear and tear and instabilities. The buttocks perform three motions. The first would be hip extension. Here I'm taking my leg behind me, I am extending my hip. The second would be hip abduction, where I take my leg out to the side. This is hip abduction. And lastly, there is hip external rotation. You see how my thigh rotates outward here. This is hip external rotation. If I'm weak with hip abduction, then I'll compensate in the frontal plane through my spine. And it's very common when we see people walk, they'll either walk and they'll have a pelvic drop like this, and they'll shift through their low back. Or I'd say more commonly, we'll see people lean like this to the side. That'll generate wear and tear in the low back. If I'm weak with regards to hip extension, and I lack the ability to extend my hip, then I'll compensate through lumbar extension, which will lead to wear and tear. If I lack strength with regards to external rotation, then I'll compensate through too much torso rotation or rotation through the spine, leading to wear and tear. In your hip region here, you actually have several buttock muscles. You have several small ones, and then you get a few large ones. The two large ones I'd like to discuss would be the posterior gluteus medius and the gluteus maximus. So the role of the posterior gluteus medius is essentially to stabilize us on one leg. So you see here, when I stand on one leg, my pant line is nice and level. That's because my gluteus medius is firing nicely. It's the guy that prevents me from shifting like this. The other one uh, we want to think about is the gluteus maximus muscle. All right, so the gluteus maximus is the primary hip extender. 
Now you have several other smaller muscles in there that are also hip external rotators and both of those muscles are hip external rotators and abductors, but um, we won't be discussing those. But for all the exercises uh, laid out on the website for buttock strengthening, they will either be hitting that posterior gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, if not both. On a separate side note for some of those uh, fitness fanatics out there who are really into squats and deadlifts, are those exercises great for your butt? Absolutely. However, those train the gluteus maximus to really hit this posterior gluteus medius. If you're gonna be doing anything in weight bearing, you really need to be doing it on one leg or to have some type of resistance band around your legs. So one of the downfalls to doing a lot of double leg workouts like squats and deadlifts, although they are awesome exercises, is that you won't hit a lot of the uh, smaller muscles in your buttocks, uh, some of these smaller external rotators, as well as the posterior gluteus medius. And if you think about it, if you're running and you're an athlete, when you're running, you are never on two legs. That is the difference between walking and running. So when you're running, you're always on one leg. So it's real important that you have good stability, good strength in that hip, um, and you wanna train those smaller external rotators as well as that posterior gluteus medius muscle. A common error with buttock strengthening exercises, and in particular for those that are weak or tight in their hip, is They'll try and do the right thing by strengthening their butt, but unfortunately what they're doing is rather than moving through the hip correctly, they're moving excessively through the low back. And so if you're doing any of the buttock strengthening exercises and you're moving excessively through the back, you're actually causing it harm, and that's a great way to make low back pain. So watch the videos closely uh, with regards to the buttock strengthening exercises so that you do them correctly so that you don't hurt your back. All right, guys, that is the importance of buttock strengthening. So go out there, make a strong, healthy butt so you too can perfect your movement.